Hey folks, welcome back to the Ramsey Horror Special Vlogs on the Uncult site. So in this episode, I'll be talking about their 1989 feature, Purani Haveli, which roughly translates as The Ancient Palace. Those who have the Bollywood Horror DVD sets from Mondo Macabro will recall that Purani Haveli was included as the bonus film on the Volume 2 set with Virana. In fact, even theatrically, it was released just after Virana. There are likely two factors that guided the construction of Purani Haveli. The first is the Ramses' insistence to stick with the Purana Mandir formula, which had brought them such great returns, even if by this time those returns had started to diminish. The second was the nightmarish battle that they fought with the Indian censor board for the release of Virana. Like in Purana Mandir, the young lovers, rather the ostensibly young lovers, since lead actor Deepak Parashar was in his late 30s by this time, they're traveling with other friends to a decrepit old palace to resolve the obstacles to their romantic future. But once there, they find themselves having to fight for their very lives against the demonic forces that prevail in the place. So, once again we come to the sprawling abandoned mansion with the stuffed animal trophies that served as the backdrop in Purana Mandir, Taikhana and even Virana. The elaborate dungeon slash crypt is the same that was used in Taikhana. A similar set of visual tricks is employed to suggest the supernatural activity. The ominous Ramsey musical motive that originated with Purana Mandir is once more trotted out. There is some major deja vu here. While the Ramses are at fault for this wholesale recycling, there is an interesting variations on a theme element that plays out across the series of films on account of the repetition. After all, even more universally celebrated horror artists like Emma James and H.P. Lovecraft recycled several elements in their fiction. In any case, the Ramses never made any claim to being trend-setting artists. They were in the business of quick returns for modest investments and if they saw a trend that worked, they milked it for what it was worth. Now let's talk about the monster in the room or as the case is in the film. While Purana Mandir's demon Samri had a personal grudge driving his evil deeds, the monster in Purani Haveli is like Taikhana's undead ghoul, a more amorphous entity. A flashback in the middle of the movie reveals that he is simply the result of a pregnant woman giving birth under the malign influence of the palace. So the true source of evil is the location, the palace, rather than the creature itself. The monster is played by actor Mane Kirani. He has good presence and unlike some of their cheaper imitators, the Ramses certainly deliver the goods on his makeup. Irani was a regular supporting player, mainly doing henchmen characters in Hindi movies of the 80s and early 90s. He didn't work in many horror films overall, but in 1990, just a year after Purani Haveli, he did a film called Amavaski Raat or Moonless Night, in which also he plays a demonic origin killer, but in a very different style. Apart from the monster, there is also a delightful iron statue that periodically comes to life and snuffs out whichever unlucky fool happens to be nearby. I quite enjoyed this statue's shenanigans. He reminded me of the knight from the game Quake. I wish the movie had either a tag team or a versus match with the monster and the knight statue. While it was never an original creation, Purani Haveli still had the ingredients to be a cracking Bollywood horror. But for the longest time, it only hints at its potential. At least Tekhana's treasure hunt plot was interesting on its own when the monster action wasn't happening. This one unfortunately features a lot of tedious and repetitive filler. Apart from the musical numbers, you have a barrel of crude homophobic comedy that wasn't very funny to start with and translates even worse. The narrative can be alarmingly disjointed. After one person dies in an unexplained fashion in the palace, the gang of friends just buries him in the nearby grounds and carries on with their holiday like nothing had ever happened. There's almost an element of gaslighting in how each time the lead girl claims to have seen something strange, she is dismissed with an, oh, that's just your imagination, put down. It doesn't help that the lead girl, Amita Nangia, has a bland oatmeal quality lacking the spunky charm of the Ramses' best-remembered heroine, Arti Gupta. 
most people who've seen Purani Haveli will mainly remember its last 20 minutes when the monster bursts out from the crypt and proceeds to kick some major ass, including attacking a busload of the escaping friends. And for good reason. Especially after the slack middle section, this sequence has a relentless pulse-pounding feel that resonates with some of the Ramsey's best work. In keeping with the Christian motifs used throughout the film, the final showdown takes place in a church drawing from both classic hammer horror and films like The Omen. Interestingly, since it is the palace itself and not the creature which is the source of the evil, there exists the possibility for it to rise again. So the last section of Purani Haveli is great, but it is lacking in one thing, gore. I have a theory about this. As I described in my Virana blog post, there was an almost two year struggle for the theatrical release of that film because the censors repeatedly denied them a certificate. It finally came out after more than 40 cuts and that too for an adults only rated film. I feel either the censors became more scissor happy with the subsequently released Purani Haveli or the Ramses themselves became extra cautious in its making. So even when the monster is in full rampage mode, there are few overt displays of the red stuff in comparison to their previous films. Most of the time, he just gropes people roughly and leaves the rest to your imagination. But still, it's an energetic final act that raises the film from its midsection slump and renders it overall a worthy second tire Ramsey horror feature. In the next Ramsey horror special episode, I hope to tackle 1990's Band Darwaza, which was the last major monster film in this series, and a fitting swan song from their iconic horror star Anirudh Agarwal. Till then, good night, sleep tight, and don't look under the bed, there might be monsters there.